Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got part two of the Green Bay Packers offense. I promise you guys this. If you guys hit the like button, you want to see part two. So this is part two. If you're catching this, but you didn't see part one, I'll put a link in the description. Other than that, if you want to see any particular playbook next month, I'm already having a request for a run and shoot the Rams. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, we'll hit the like button if you guys want to keep seeing these videos. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. Next up, I got the half-back stretch alert smoke. It's just a good stretch play. I don't really think the smoke's really that great, but you know these 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 RPOs really can confuse the defense to that they don't react to the run plays as quickly because there is the chance that it's it's not going to be a run play, so they kind of play it a little bit more hesitant. So I'd say you know I don't like the smoke play unless it's going to be um, you know they run a cover three or something like this could be a cover three and you could you could go back and cross, but ultimately you know I, it's the only scenario where I think it's going to be any good is cover three maybe cover four. Next up, we got the halfback toss crack. No adjustments to be made. You get a, a good seal on the edge here, though. Um, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of times, I mean, I'll take what's there. I, I could have tried to swing it out for more, but I'll take five easy right there. Um, although, ultimately, you know, you're, you're trying to get big plays. Here. You want to try to bounce it outside. Here we go. We get good blocking. Uh, can I get the speed? Oh, that's right, baby. That was a real tight look right there. Like I said, you can see, obviously, this has really big play potential. Go ahead and I'll run it one more time. Um, but like I said, the blocking's setting up pretty good. As you know, I, I don't know if maybe I just didn't follow it really well there, but I saw some really, some really good potential there. Let's go like this one more time. Like I said, that guy he just chips on, and then they pass off really well, uh, and then I'm just running for my life on that particular set. So really good run play. Next up, out of the single back bunch base, we got the Z spot. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put my B route on a streak. I can also put this guy, the, the, the square route on an in route or something like that. It doesn't really matter. But basically, I mean, if, it's, if this guy's open right away, I'm going to work my way back. If he's open right away, I'm going to take it for a catch and run. Put your fastest guy there possible. Um, I didn't necessarily do that, but I always recommend it. Um, and then, like I said, if he's not open, a lot of times the guy, you know, he, if he's covered down low, the guy above is going to be open. It's going to be that slant route or that outside post route. So that's pretty much your read. You're reading high and low. One of them is going to be open pretty much every time. Just take it. Don't ask no questions. You know what I'm saying? Don't force it to nothing that you don't need to be. Other than that, the B route sometimes can get open up the seam of cover two. Um, but this guy's a good cover two play outside. It's a little bit safer. The inside the inside cover twos don't really work as well this year because the safeties kind of converge in the middle. Next up, we have the four verticals. This play here, I'm going to put, uh, put more on a drag. If it's a cover two, um, that drag will come in handy to pull coverage back for Samuel. This whole play is really about the B route. Um, although the RB route and the A route will get open, you can see this guy here just got just gets open way, way more to the outside, whether it's cover three, cover four. Um, it doesn't really matter. Here's a cover three or cover one. If it's a cover one, I'm hitting a home run. If it's a cover three, um, I'll know right away because the cornerback drops back and then I'll just hit him underneath. If I make a miss, I can I can take it up the sideline. You know, it, it's a scenario that can play out. Um, I could also put uh, this guy in a drag. Like I know this isn't a cover two, so I can put him on a, a slant if I want. Um, this might be a cover one. No, it's still not. So they keep hitting me with cover threes. Um, so you know, but that's like stealing candy from a baby. I mean, it's just so it's so easy. So easy. So here we go. We're gonna do this again. Like I said, this might be a cover two. But obviously not though, because the cornerback dropped back so far. Um, it's a cover one. That's an interesting look. <laughs> If it is a cover one, Samuel's going to be a home run. Um, these inside routes, I, you know, I forget about them, but... Oh, here's a blitz. There we go. So I guess that's easy. <laughs> They're going to send a house blitz like that. You're going to have a lot of openings. So, had to pick a cover one because they're not going to give it to me otherwise. Um, this is pretty much going to be, you know, just going to wait till he turns up the field. And, you know, you can bullet, lob, whatever you want, as long as it gets separation. He didn't catch it there. I mean, it's a pretty good cornerback covering my receiver. Um, but you can see he's going to get passed pretty much every time. Next up, we got the PA boot slide. This play... <laughs> 
This play right here, I mean, you don't have to make any adjustments. It's pretty good just like this. Uh, the, the underneath route, I mean, the A route is probably going to be the most money route other than the comeback route. Um, and then the RB route's really going to be good under coverages, like a lot of cover threes and whatnot. Um, he's going to get open. Uh, but, you know, you really have uh, just about everything here is going to work except for the B route. The B route's just going to uh, pull coverage for the most part. Um, and then, like I said, the comeback. Oof. Comeback's going to be your best option against man. Um, as you can see right here, I mean, it looks like a man. Comeback route, like I said, that's your bailout route pretty much every time. Whether it's man or zone. Um, and then your A route. I mean, your A route's going to be the most consistent, especially against, you know, user coverage, because there's so many different routes going on. Um, your opponent's going to, you know, they, they might just disregard that one. Um, I would say, you know, if you put B on an in route, it'll give him a little bit more purpose. Other than um, you know, other than what he's doing, as <laughs> we get a man coverage once again. <laughs> so the RB route used to be a really glitchy play. There we go. We finally get him open. <laughs> like I said, he'll get forgotten a lot of times, uh, especially in like cover threes. So don't forget about him underneath on a nice catch and run. <laughs> Next up, we got the PA boot slide again. Different one. Uh, you know, I like this play. I mean, there's just, you know, there's a lot going on here. Um, you could always put that one receiver streaking on a, on a comeback route, too, but I find it kind of gets in the way of what these other receivers are doing. But the way they're just streaking across the field, I mean, one of them's going to get open pretty much every time. And it's hard to use all those levels. As you see right there, I actually get, I get sacked. No big deal. But like I said, you're going to cancel that play action. The B route's a really good route. The, the, every one of the crossing routes is a good route for, for different coverages, and your user's not going to have a shot covering all these. Um, they might start low, they might start high, but they're, they're, somebody's going to get open pretty much every time. You just have to you know, just have to wait it out. You know, like right there, he was being covered, but I knew he was going to pass him on. And that's exactly what happened. I knew that coverage was going to pass him on, so... Don't necessarily have the best routes here for man. Although the A route is pretty good. It's pretty good against man as I overthrow that there. But he would, I mean, it was there. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't the worst decision ever. It was a close, a close uh, completion. And then, like I said, if you if you have a man, I really only have comeback routes. That's pretty much all I got. So if you do not run this against, any, against, um, against man because, you know, you don't have a play for man. I mean, that was a man, but I, I switched to a comeback route before the play. And then I threw it quick because I saw the safeties coming down. So, you know, you, you can do you can do your man option as I accidentally mess up the play entirely. Um, but like I said, they're still going to, everybody's going to be open. I mean, I don't need that streak. You know what I mean? It's it, it, it's really not essential. You know, I, I can do the comeback, but then the comeback kind of gets in the way. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I said, not in the man scenario. Obviously, it doesn't get in the way, but... <laughs> it's really up to you whether you want to do the comeback or not. Let's go ahead and do this one more time. Like I said, that's actually a pretty good man beater right there. I've noticed that that works. Next up out of the single back bunch, we got the quick pitch. Uh, you can run just like this. I mean, in the past, I've motioned out that farthest receiver. Um, oh, we got lit up there, man. Like he punched him in the jaw. But you can see it was a big run. Uh, but yeah, I find it's good just to run just like this. I don't necessarily um, need to make any motions. I think it's actually pretty good how, as it is. So here we go. Like I said, we're getting that now. Oh man, just gotta hold that block down, man. Just gotta hold that block down. So I'm gonna try motioning out this receiver just to see, you know, what the difference is. And you can see right there. I guess I got a little bit better, a little bit better spacing by motioning out the receiver. So we'll do that one more time. Like I said, he backs off a little bit, which is part of the reason motioning out that receiver's always been so successful for me, is it, is it backs away the cornerback, and then we get a nice, big, easy run. So we gotta do that one more time. Motion him out. And then, like I said, it just helps me to get to the edge. It's not always a huge play, but you can see I got much more than I did before. So motioning them out, like I said, cornerback drops off, and it's gonna make it easier for me. And I would have been gone, man. It's one dude to beat that Deion Jones, man. Speedy middle linebacker. 
son of a bitch. It's like right here. He dropped down, so I know I'm probably going to have to cut this short. Actually, I don't. Yeah, no, he uh, he must have dropped off or got blocked out of the way or something. But you can see, it's a much easier run play with um, with the motion, which matches a lot of pump, uh, a lot of pass plays that I put out anyway. So you shouldn't have an issue there. Like I said, he just got, man, he just came. That dude, that safety, typically those safeties blow that up. That dude was coming down to blow that up, and it didn't work out for him. He got blocked twice. So one more time. Just to show some consistency here. With the new setup. Oh, man, come on, bro. That dude, he's just he's just playing lights out. He's really Ready? disrupting Ready? some things. <laughs> Emotional the wrong guy, but it don't really matter. I'm willing to bet. Let's just see. It's the same idea. Like I said, it didn't matter. Still got a big run play out of it. Still close to 10 yards. Next up, we got the spacing switch. So all I'm going to do here, I like to put the X route on a, on a uh, slant. Uh, just to pull coverage, uh, if it's a man coverage, none of these other routes are really going to work. So the slant's going to be the, the first read on man and pretty much the last read against all the other zones. Uh, but I'm essentially just kind of reading, um, you know, how I'm reading basically right to left when it comes to, uh, you know, the uh, the zones in, in the uh, bunch. I can pretty much eliminate the uh, the B route pre-snap if I look at it like this here is a cover three. So I know against cover three, Sam was going to typically get open, but it was actually a man coverage anyway. So like I said, I'm going to have to wait and hit that slant. Or I can just, you know, I can hit uh, the comeback routes. I just have to hit them quick. I said if my pre-snap read, the cornerbacks are down, a lot of times the B or the B route won't get open. I'll know that right off the bat. This looks like it might be um, like a cover. That looks like a cover three of some kind. Uh, but like I said, I can take that I can take that read away from pre-snap read. That's only going to open against cover three and cover four, the B route, or like this here, like like a blitz looks like. Um, but that's pretty much my first read as he fumbles anyway. But like I said, I mean, I can tell like if the quarterbacks are down. So right there, you know what I'm saying? I'm just reading B, and then I'm reading in. This is just, you know, a really good red zone play, ultimately. That's the idea behind a play like this. This is not like a game-breaking, you know, one-play touchdown or nothing like that. But if you need a couple yards, this is going to be the look. And then, like I said, ultimately, you want to pass that low. You want to hold the LT button to, th to throw that ball to the ground a lot of times because you can see the way that that animation pops up. You pretty much want to throw all of them that way because the way the animation pops up, a lot of times you'll get that ball knocked out. Next up, I have the single back deuce close. We got the PAX post cross. It's just going to be a cover four, one play touchdown. You just have to motion this guy out. That's pretty much it. You don't really have to do anything else. Um, and you pretty much have a play right here. You just have to buy time. Uh, and then once he gets inside of that free safety, he's going to be gone. You know what I mean? Just pass lead and pull it across. Pull it away. And that's pretty much it. If you want to, you can always drag the A route or something like that. Um, you know, that's always at, that's always at your discretion for another check down. The running back's going to be a pretty good check down. But it's really about when you throw the ball. So, moving on. Next up, we got the bench. This play right here, I mean, I, I went over this in previous formations. These, these outside routes, I mean, that was a bad throw. He didn't catch it. But you can see he was open, whether it's cover two, cover three, even cover four of these routes tend to get there and then you also have your, your your you know your little out routes here which get open i mean this is just a really really good play this year uh one of my more favorite i would say uh i'll definitely be running it i probably should have threw the man I, that was i threw in the double coverage right there that wasn't the best move so i'm gonna go ahead and reduce a couple times like i said that uh, they chip off the deeper route i'll take the underneath and catch and run all game so one more time and there we go. Like I said, that's, I mean, I'll take that underneath route. It's it's there. Next up, we get the halfback stretch. Another really good run formation or run play from this formation. I mean, there's just, you know, really, really wide blocking as I make two guys miss. Two guys miss with a nasty juke from uh, Christian McCaffrey. This guy is amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just hit this once or twice more. Like I said, I'll just take him out stretching as far as I mean it's just you know this is just a really top-notch run formation to be honest so here we got the cover through safety on the one side I'm obviously going to want to go to the other side set these guys up you know it's just a really consistent run next up we got the halfback wham I'm not a huge fan of wham plays but um, you know I mean it's a, it's a good enough play I'm just not really 
a wham person. It's not really the play I like to run, but I always point it out because there's a lot of people that swear by this play. Um, you know, and there's I'm sure there's different. I mean, it's like it's almost like a trap play. I, I personally am not a huge trap play person either. I don't really think that's the way this year either. But like I said, I'm always going to call this play out just in case there are people that like to run this. But it is a good run play. You can see I get a good couple yards inside. Um, you know, anytime you have you know, traps and wham plays, they're, they're, they're pretty decent. Um, you know, but like right there. So I finally get my big run. But I'm always trying to bounce it outside anyway. <laughs> but still, you can see there's definitely times you're going to have holes. So let's go ahead and do that again. I got a guy coming off the edge. We'll see if that messes things up. Like I said, sticky blocking inside, so I'm going to take it outside. Uh, find my own path. Definitely a huge cutback lane. So, like I said, good play. Maybe it's just me on the sticks, though. I don't know, because that was definitely not where the play was designed to go. So, guys coming down again one more time. And there, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's definitely a good play. Like I said, you got to make your own path, but there's definitely some sticky blocking in there. Let's do that one more time. Like I said, there's the inside. And I'm going to make that dude miss and make him hesitate. And I'm gone. So the halfback wham. Definitely a good play. I take back everything I said earlier in the video. N nasty run. I'm getting lots of big time runs inside. Next up out of the single back double south, we have the bench. Let's play here. I mean, if you think it's a cover two, which this obviously isn't, this obviously is a cover three. I'm going to put uh, the X route on a streak. For cover three is for cover two. I'm just gonna run as is. I got sacked, but you can see it was wide open. I mean, they were obviously sending the house there. Um, but yeah, I mean, so you know, you say here's another one. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get this off either. But uh, they're sending some house man coverages, and you can see obviously that beats man, uh, the uh, the B route um, or the uh, Y route rather. So it's really up to you. I mean, like I said, this is a cover two, so I actually made the bad. I made a bad decision there. Made the wrong decision. <laughs> Um, here we go. Obviously, this is uh, now we got that cover three look or that man look. So that Y route's gonna beat that outside. You know, what I mean, you're just pre-diagnosing based off of the safeties. You know what it's gonna be. So here we go, cover two look. Now we're just gonna hit that that Y route up top. You know what I mean? So it's like you just you just have to know what adjustment to make based off of what coverage, whether to leave it as is if, it's, if you think it's cover two or if you think it's cover three, like this looks like right here. Just gonna put them on a streak. And if it's a cover three or a man, it's going to beat it outside. That was actually much better coverage than, than previous plays, but nine times out of ten, it's going to beat it outside. Next up, we got to dig in up. So this play is really all about the, uh, the stop and go. So I'm just going to put B route on a, um, you know, I'm just going to put them on a, uh, I forget the word, a <laughs> smart route. Uh, then I'm just going to streak Y because I want to pull coverage back. The X route is a pretty good man beater in its own right. So you have a really good check down, uh, you know, whether it's whatever man coverage it is. Like I said, this is mostly for cover one man, but he's good against anyone. So that's an option there. And then, like I said, you're just going to put the Y route on a streak. I can block the running back as well because, like I said, all my routes are pretty much set up. Uh, and then the B route is pretty much, you know, just pass leading outside. You can see that smart route. He really gets past that corner. That's a good cornerback, too, in Desmond Trufant. Next up, we got the flanker spot. All I'm going to do is streak the X route. Uh, other than that, I mean, I can block the running back, um, you know, put the, put the uh, A route on a, on a drag. And that's pretty much it. So I'll have a really good play outside. Good check down is going to be A, but the Y route 9 times out of 10 is going to get open to the outside pretty much. So that's, that's pretty much the play that I'm trying to create here is that Y route. I'm going to get him to the uh, to the sideline. And like I said, that A route really is there just to pull coverage down against like cover 2. He's actually threw that ball a little bit quick as well. The longer the play goes, the, uh, the more open the Y route will get. So let's do that one more time. Said, I mean, I actually almost got myself sacked, so I had to throw it early again. So let's do this one more time. Get that Y route out. Like I said, he's getting jammed up a little bit, so I just, you know, it's it's it's, it's going to be consistent though against man or zone. That Y route's going to get open pretty much every time. The A route's the check down against man or zone, and it also pulls coverage uh, against cover two. So that's pretty much, you know. 
Everybody else here is just pulling coverage as well. I'm going to say right here, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that up and get a big play. Should have threw that a little bit earlier, though, because the sideline kind of messed me up. But like I said, it's all timing, uh, and it's all about that one route. Next up, we got the jet sweep. Just want to make sure your fastest receiver is running this option. Um, although I don't have my fastest receiver doing it. I got, I got Bowden doing it. But you can see it's still a successful play. If I had a faster guy, I'd probably just get a couple more yards. Uh, but no big deal. Like I said, you're just going to take the ball and sprint basically up the uh, sideline. I mean, you can get, you can turn up the field a little bit uh, prematurely. You don't always have to go outside, but you're not going to be able to turn up before you get past the line of scrimmage. At least not with any type of athleticism anyway. And if you take a loss, it's only a couple yards. You're getting more than you're losing, so it's not really that big a deal. Uh, ultimately, this, this play is going to be in the positive. As you can see right here, I mean, I'm just going to mirror my guys. Um, and then, he, then he fumbles on top of it, but like I say, he's not athletic. This is not a very good receiver. Next up, we got the PA double cross. He's going to motion his B route over. He's going to beat just about anything other than man coverage and cover two. You'll know if it's a man coverage based off the fact that, uh, you know, whether or not he'll be followed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's that simple. Uh, this guy right here, though, this is a good um, cover two route. As you can see, Hogan, who's not even a very good receiver, uh, beats that outside to the edge. So that's pretty much your cover two play. Here we go. Now we got a man. So we know this overall, this play is not going to be very good against man. Uh, so it's not going to have much success. But the, but the Y route is going to be your best option coming across the, the middle uh, against man anyway. <coughs> so you got your, your cover two is going to be high and low with Samuel and uh, Hogan. This is a cover three. So that's pretty much going to leave the B route underneath. Although he actually cut on that pretty good, but you know, I still got four or five yards, so I'll take that. And I'll go ahead and do this one more time. So we got our man covered, so we know where the ball is going to go right away. We're going to hit the Y, we're going to hit the Y route. So he, I don't know, maybe it was a man, I don't know. Maybe he just couldn't keep up with him, couldn't tell you, but either way, it's a good play. Next up, we got the PA Jet Sweep. So this play right here, there's no adjustments really needed. Um, you have a, a motion route. Uh, it's a pretty unique play. Um, it actually works as a one-play touchdown against cover four, as long as you get a better throw than I did there. <laughs> pretty unique play. It doesn't get any adjustments, and it's a, it's a one-play touchdown against cover four. You just don't have the most blocking, and you have to hold up. But uh, if you get that blocking, you can see, I mean, the, 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 out, the outside receiver just gets past the coverage really well. Ultimately, uh, you can't make any adjustments either. You can't make, um, you know, I'd put McCaffrey into a pass block if I could. Uh, but you have some pretty good plays around the board as far as, like, checkdowns go. I mean, you have a lot of options, but obviously I'm calling this play because I want to hit a home run. At least if it's there. But if it's not, if you call it wrong, it's not a cover four. You do have a lot of other options. Uh, typically your RB route, your A route, your B route, all are going to get open at some point throughout the play. But if, the, if you call it, uh, against some, uh, you're expecting cover forward, you get something else. Um, it's still a good play. I mean, you have your, your RB route's going to be a good check down underneath cover threes and cover fours. Uh, you, you have a good, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the in route on the outside is going to be open quite a bit. Uh, and then the A route obviously is uh, pretty good too. The Y route is probably, you know, I don't, I don't say I necessarily look that way too much, but it's the same thing as far as getting open underneath cover three and cover four. So this is a good cover three, four play uh, all across the board. Next up, we got the power alert bubble. This play is not as good as the stretch play, but it's still a good run play, um, as you can see right here. I mean, I think consistency-wise, the, the stretch play will be better. But you do have a, a really good option here. And then, like I said, you're just watching this uh, this Y route. You're watching the guy over the top, how he reacts. So it's essentially the same setup as the stretch play. Um, but, you know, you can show a different look. Because, like I said, this is, a, this is probably a better inside run play than the stretch. You have the ability to take it inside. Uh, you know, the stretch is pretty much one read to the outside. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, but like I said, I mean, this is really all about, you know, the bubble screen is really the most consistent play, in my opinion, as far as uh, getting big yards. So, you know, it's that. And then, you know, the power the power run is uh, is a little bit less important. Uh, but if you have a gap in the inside, you'll definitely, you know, they're both going to be successful to an extent. Next up, we got the stretch alert bubble. Typically, if I have the outside edge, 
uh, the run play will have success. I mean, if there's like a cover three safety there, or something like that, you won't necessarily have that. Uh, but it's a good run play as long as you come to the line, like right here. We have that safety in the hole. Nobody over the Y route, which is essentially the only read you need to make on a particular play like this. You want to have a better playmaker in the slot than I do, but you can see I'm still getting big plays. But if I had Curtis Samuel running that, I probably would have had a touchdown. So, like I said, there's nobody in front of Hogan. Obviously, that's going to be the read. Uh, if they if they crash inside too much, like like they did right there, I tried to take it anyway. I mean, he did a good job of, of recovering, but typically, if that if that coverage guy crashes inside like that, you'll have a good a good play as well. Uh, but you know, really, the run play is decent. The bubble screen's better. Uh, it really just depends on what type of look you get. And like I said right here, here's the uh, the type of look that I want to get, uh, where I get that that outside containment edge there. Uh, but a good play to either side. Like I said right here, there, here, there he sucks inside. Like I said, I can get what I can get, but if I had a faster guy, I'd be getting even more. <clears throat> there we go one more time. Like I said, we'll just we'll just give that off a lot of times. You know what I mean? Like uh, to me, that's the better play. So like I said, watching the the, the blocking on this side, the the uh, the linebacker slash safety, whoever's in front of the wire on the other side. That's pretty much all you're going to do to make your read. So like I said right here, oh, they just busted right through. That's pretty much all you're going to do to make your read. Next up out of the single back tight way off, we got the bench switch. This play right here, I mean, it's just a real easy setup. If it's a cover two or a cover three or a cover one, really, like right there, that looked like a cover one. I'm going to hit that outside slant real easy. Can't really run man coverage against that. Um, if it's a cover three though, I can just put him on a streak. Although this looks like it's a it's a cover two, so I'm gonna keep him in that, and I'm probably gonna hit that that X route once again up at the cover two side, uh, which is really easy. Um, so you know that's that's really a this play right here is just pretty easy against just about anything you want to run. This looks like a cover two as well, so I know I'm probably gonna be hitting that X route again. Like I said, it's just you know that's that's this is just one of the easiest plays to run, and it's one of the better plays this year in my opinion. So let's go ahead and let's run this one more time. Like I said, I would like to see, like that, that was a cover three and it didn't really matter. I still caught it in front of the cover three. <laughs> if you get a cover three, I mean, you could just put one side on a streak. So you have your cover three side on the one side, your cover two side on the other side. Pretty much the entire game if you wanted to. Uh, this here, like I said, it looks like a cover three. Uh, and I just catch it right in front of the cornerback and we're gone again. Like I said, a little bit tighter coverage than I was expecting, but like I said, that might be... That might be the best way to do it. So now you got your cover three side and your cover two side. Next up, we got the jet sweep. To me, these jet sweeps are pretty consistent. Um, you know, you can run it just like this. You can't make any adjustments. I wish I could make an adjustment so that it mirrors uh, some of the other plays that I put out where I can motion out the receiver. But it's a really good play just like this. You can take it short or you can take it wide. You're pretty much going to have to read that defensive end pretty much every time. I find specialists to take it wide just about every time. Try to take it straight to the boundary. Right here's a cover three. I probably won't have a blocker for that. Hmm. You don't necessarily want to run this against cover threes because a lot of times safety's down and you don't have a blocker to account for them. But uh, like I said, you can see right there. I mean, if I had a faster guy other than Hogan, I probably would have been gone on that play. So really good, uh, really good option to run. But like I said, don't run against cover three. You can see that safety's going to get in the way. Next up, we got the PA deep cross. All I'm going to do is motion out the wire route. This is a cover four, one play touchdown. I can drag Olsen or any number of guys, really, just to give myself a check down. Just pick your pick your poison as far as who you want to drag. Uh, I really find it's best to uh, block the running back, although I forgot to do that. But it doesn't really matter because ultimately I'm just trying to get this as a home run. So, you know, just another cover four, one play touchdown. So just drag Olsen, motion more across. Blocked running back. You can block Olsen too. I mean, you can, you can, if you need more blocking, you can drag the Hogan. It doesn't really matter. The, the main two routes are the B route and the X route, and then buying time and then just delivering a good ball. Pass leading away. Was, that was a weird animation. It looked like he was passed, but you're just pass leading away and bullet passing once he gets inside of that safety. So let's do that again. Personally, I prefer to, if I can, I prefer to have Olsen uh, on that drag because I just feel like having him going in the same direction is probably best. Uh, but the Y route obviously gets open too. So like I said, right there, we're getting we're getting way past. I'm not getting the best throw. I need to get that ball out there more, but that's fine. It's working. Next up, we got the PA post dig. 
If I motion out Samuel, this is a one point touchdown against cover four uh, with no adjustments. I mean, I could easily, um, I got my check and release. It could be a, a good check down, uh, but ultimately it's all about this route here. I mean, I'm calling this play to hit a home run. Um, you just have to wait till it gets inside of the safety and then bullet pass and lead away from that safety. Uh, and that's pretty much the look. But like I said, the check and release is a pretty cool uh, addition this year. Um, you know, if somebody, like I said, if I need that, you know, obviously here he's not going to get much, but it's obviously an option if I if I get in trouble and I can't make the play. I also have the option of putting somebody on a drag if I want to. Typically putting Y on the drag, that same check and release would make the most sense. So I have a high low coming across the middle there. But uh, it's entirely up to you. Um, and then, like I said, I'm pretty much just trying to hit this home run anyway. As you can see right there, I threw that a little bit early and I didn't get a good throw. But it's it's all about timing. It's all about timing and you can uh, you can easily make that play against cover four. Next up, we got the drive wide corner. So all I'm going to do is motion out Thomas, put the A route on a streak. And uh, if it's a cover two, like this looks like it might be the A route and the RB route. It's going to be really good. Uh, but you can see right there, I mean, we have, um, you know, this is the way that that, uh, that zone reacted to the drag. Uh, really got Olsen open for a big play. That's pretty much the adjustments. I can block the running back if I want. I don't think I'm really going to look his way too much. Um, but if it's a if it's a man, I mean, you have a couple of you know the the the, the crossing routes over the middle are probably going to be the best for man coverage. If you have a really fast tight end, the RB route will have success against man. But um, I don't think typically you're not going to have that against in, in most teams. And then outside here, that RB route, the way that cornerback drops back in the cover three, it's going to give that underneath a lot. So that's a good play there. Go ahead and let's do this a few more times. Like I said, there's explosive capabilities against cover two. Like right here, we got that cover two play. The RB route's going to be big over the top. Mostly because of that drag. Here, this looks like a man coverage, so I'll probably have to hit that drag right away. Yeah, you can tell we got a man blitz. Just the way that all the safeties are in the box. You can tell that's pretty much going to be your best option against man. And then you got your over the top um, against man as well with more. So here we got another cover two probably. Like I said, that outside route is just going to be, you know, monstrous against cover two. Like I said, if you got speed, you could go. If you got a fast enough tight end, you can take it to the house. So, you know, pretty glitchy play here as far as that's concerned. I guess, especially against cover two. So here we got the A route against cover two as well. Um, you know, that mid-read basically dropped off. He didn't hold on to the ball, but you can see he was open in the middle. So against cover two, this is really going to beat up both of them. And then here we got a cover three. I know the RB route is going to be open underneath right away. You know what I'm saying? If you can't throw it too quick, though, because you get that stupid animation. You have to hold it a little bit longer than that. Here it looks like we have another cover three or a man blitz, and then I'll just take that, you know. If you blitz too heavy, obviously, that's going to be an easy play. But it's really all about the streaking tight end and the motioned out receiver. Next up, we got the four verticals. So on the defensive side, we're going to go random 3-4. I'm just going to run this as is to show you that the uh, the underneath running back, the um, I'm not really sure what the route is, but that'll beat most things. The way that this play is designed, the, the 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 four verticals will pull routes back and the triangle route will be really good but the the route that I want to exploit are these outside routes now essentially you can see how right there it got you know I'm gonna go ahead and move the ball to the middle because I want to exploit both sides I don't want to just stick to one side but you can see how these outside routes especially if you motion them will get outside of most coverages now that was obviously cover three cover three and cover four is gonna have that particular um, you know it's gonna it's gonna do that pretty much every time if the guy follows you can tell it's probably gonna be a cover one man and in that scenario, like I said, in that scenario, you can just throw it up because that's going to be obvious cover one beater. Um, cover two, there might be a safety there. Uh, but in cover one, like I said, when you got that cover three shell, that cover one shell look, um, the second he gets past that cornerback, it's just easy money. So you can steal that all day. But I want to go over individual coverages. I don't want to just go over random. I just wanted to show you that it can basically be just about any defense. But let's go ahead and let's break it down coverage by coverage, starting off with, like I said, cover three, because this one here is going to be a little bit different. They're all going to be a little bit different. But I would say cover three is one of the best uh, defenses this works against. Now, like I said, motioning this guy out, you can see right away that on this particular form of cover three, there's a guy sitting under that route. So what am I going to do? First 
first of all, I noticed that there's two defenders on the left side, only one defender on the right side. So obviously I want to run to the right side. So here we go once again. Now I, I've neglected to mention too, in cover threes, typically four verticals always be cover threes up the same. That's one of the, the weaknesses of, of, of cover threes. Uh, if you really want to make it, you know, you want to give yourself a little bit of a bigger window, put the circle route on a streak and then the X route will get open. You know, it'll just pull the safety a little bit to the left so that, you know, you'll get, you know, you'll get a little bit of a more of a throwing lane. But I'm still going to do this motion out because, like I said, I'm trying to create even more space uh, between the cover three corner and the, the middle third defender. And by motioning that out, you're basically, you know, giving yourself a seam to throw pretty much every time. So, like I said, put the circle route on a streak. He's going to run straight up the field with no angle, and that's going to uh, create a little bit more separation for the tight end. A little back shoulder throw, a little pass lead um, away from the safety is going to be best. But like I said, the really glitchy one is this R1 route. I mean, that, or the uh, is that the RB route? That's the one I really want to work because that's going to be open the most. It's going to be an instant open route, like you saw right there. You just have to basically, you know, get just kind of wait. I mean, you're just kind of waiting a second, as you can see right here. Let's just go ahead and we're just going to wait to turn to the field a little bit, and he's just going to be outside the defense pretty much every time. The only thing that really stops this is like a poor, accurate throw, which a lot of times Madden quarterbacks in this year's game can do. Um, especially if you try to throw it too quick, a lot of times, uh, you know, that'll be an issue and it'll, it'll throw over the tight end's head. I also don't have a very good tight end. I mean, this is not, I mean, the Raiders don't have a tight end unless Jared Cook last year. Um, so just imagine if I was running this with like George Kittle or something like that. Like I would just be having so much more success and I'm still getting 15, 20 yards without, I mean, instantly. You know what I'm saying? It's like an instant 15, 20 yards, nothing I really have to do other than just drop back and just, and just hook it out there. Um, you know, so, you know, you can't beat that. I mean, that's just, you know, plays like that. They'll drive your opponent insane. And this, this route on the outside will guarantee that your opponent cannot just pay attention to the streaks inside. I mean, that's, that's going to be their natural reaction is paying attention to these streaks inside. So if they start paying attention to the outside guy, you throw it to the inside tight end. If they pay attention to the inside tight end, you throw it to the outside guy. I mean, you, you really can't, essentially the only thing you can do is switch coverages, get out of the cover three. And that's when we get to the cover two beater. Say they switch the cover two cover four I got a variation of this that will beat just about every one so by this point in the game your opponent probably ditched the cover three because they couldn't figure it out so I would say a lot of people's their next bet would probably be cover two so let's go ahead and let's pick Tampa two and then let's show you the variation for that now set for this is really simple all I'm gonna do is put the X route on a drag and I'm gonna block the running back that's it motion out the receiver like I did previously and uh, I don't even have to motion him out. I mean, I can leave him inside. It's going to be the same result, just as long as I get a good pass lead. But obviously, motioning him out is going to get him a little bit further away from that safety. But you don't have to motion him. I mean, you can leave it like it as is. You just have to make the adjustment. X on a drag. You know, put the running back on a pass block so you can have the time. And then the pass lead, a lot of times, will get it done, as you can see right there. I mean, I can move the ball back a little bit. You can see how far this ball travels in the air. So let's go ahead and let's move it back maybe like 10 yards so I don't have to worry about that again. But this is a bomb, man. I mean, this is this is a deep play. The cover two really has no no choice, <laughs> or you know, they're gonna leave cover two in a heartbeat, just like they left cover three if they stay in this. So, like I said, I mean, I, I like the I like the roll out a little bit. I did the motion there. You can see maybe that's why I, I had he ran out of the ran out of bounds. So, like I said, I'm not 100 percent sure what's the best way to do it: leaving him inside or motioning him out. They both work. That's the bottom line. But you can see now when I when I combine pass leading outside with the motion um, you can see that a lot of times I'm just I'm shorting myself I'm, I'm throwing the ball out of bounds could be an accuracy issue once again Derek Carr's not a great quarterback um, but you can see I mean like right there when I bomb that up there's just there's cover two he's gonna he's gonna have to bail cover two cover three they're gonna have to bail cover three they're gonna have to bail cover two cover one man obviously doesn't work we saw that as well um, there's really just no defense for this and you can see like this is so broken like he's catching the ball past the safety like by the time the ball lands to the receiver he's already outrun the safeties Next up out of the wing flex close, we have the halfback zone weak. I mean, these plays, if you have a gap of any kind, you can see how, you know, this is a really good a really good option run play. I mean, sometimes you got to take it outside if the gap's not there and it'll work. But ultimately, this is just a really good inside run. The blocking's really sticky. Um, you can see, I mean, this just, the way this sets up is just, it's a really consistent. These these weak plays are really consistent. These zone weak plays against these, in these formations. Anytime you have tight wide receivers like that, uh, right there, he, got, he just got off the block. There's nothing you can do about that if he just sheds the block like that. But typically, you're going to get um, a really good look. I mean, he just kicks him inside there, creates a gap. I probably could have got even more. I could have tried to kick it outside, but I just wanted to get that five. But ultimately, these are just really good plays. Like I said, right there, kicks him inside. I got to take it outside. 
Um, you know, almost almost got to read it like a like a counterplay as, as far as that defensive end is concerned. So like I said right there, crosses him up. I mean, the blocking is just blocking is just really good, and uh, it's a consistent run. Next up, we got the jet sweep, and they have a jet sweep in this one that I actually really like. I mean, typically I don't like running, you know, sweeps and uh, reverses and trick plays like that because the the potential benefits can be outweighed by you know you getting tackled seven yards behind the line of scrimmage or something like that. But these jet plays, they don't have that same issue, and and you can see it's a pretty consistent play. As you can see I'm getting around the edge, I'm getting good blocking, and I'm getting about ten yards every time. But typically, if you get caught in one of these jet plays you might lose a yard or two which is like that's per i would take that all game you know what i'm saying like if i only lose a yard or two and the potential is a big play like you're seeing now i'm running this i should have antonio brown running this particular route but you can see even this guy who's you know he's somewhat fast i think he's like a 90 something speed so he's not necessarily the type of guy i mean i would love like a tyree kill run or something like that and probably be even more explosive but you can see how easily i'm getting good good yards and then like i said if i get caught what did I lose? A half a yard? I'll take that all game. It's, it, it's not the same type of risk you're taking with your typical end rounds and reverses. So I'll do a trick play like this all game and be happy with it. And like I said, it's, it's a pretty good play. It's pretty consistent anyway. Next up, we get the halfback inside zone. I find this is just a good play. I mean, a lot of times people will overcompensate to the other side, and you just have a real, you have a lot of space. They typically won't cover this backside. They'll think that they're running to the tight ends. You can also motion one of these guys out. You can see how it has the effect to the defense, though. Uh, so, to me, unless the opponent is uh, manually shifting, just run it as is. And like I said, a lot of times you can just get right in this lane, or you can even get outside of it for a big play. So, to me, a good run. Like I said typically, the, it automatically shifts like that. And you just take it to the uh, to space, and you can see you just have a really good consistent run. Next up, we got the PA seam. All I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the B route. Now I got a high low with the A and the B route. A lot of times the B route will pull the coverage down, making the A route route wide open. The comeback route is going to be um, your your most consistent play. Obviously, you know your your the tight end, though, it's going to be up there as well. Uh, but, you know, you have everything you need, really. That RB route's going to pull coverage quite a bit. I said that comeback route, putting in work. Um, it's always going to be putting in work. And, you know, your drag is going to be another safe check down. If needed. Like I said, here's man. Anytime you got man, though, that comeback route's going to be the beater. Next up, we got the stretch alert looky. Play right here, I mean, you just have, it's just a regular stretch play. Three tight ends blocking on the one side is going to be good for any play. You have the option if you want to pull the ball down, though, and throw it over this side here. You know what I'm saying? To keep your opponent off their toes. I mean, they're going to be overcompensating to the uh, the three tight end side anyway. So it's not, a bad, it's not a bad play to try to hit them on the other side and definitely give them something to think about. Next up, we got the stretch alert X looky. So here we go. Gonna, we can we can throw this ball back against the grain. Uh, as you can see, I might be able to get outside. <laughs> but you can see, I mean, it's just a stretch play with a pass play attached to it. You just have to hold X if you want to pass instead of running the stretch. It's best if, if there's a you know, if you got a man coverage. Obviously, running to this side won't have a cornerback. It's, well, not really. That's not true. So I mean, this running to this side would make the most sense if you have uh, the outside edge. Uh, other than that, like I said, I mean, throwing back across your body, a, a decent play. They're both good plays. It's just you just have to, to see, you know, what the defense is reacting to. You just have to see how the defense is reacting for the most part. I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, if they're dropping back like it's a pass play, you typically want to run it. If they're dropping down like it's a run play, you typically want to pass to the, to the receiver. Like I said, right here, I mean, just did it a little bit late. Right, let's do that one more time. I'm just shaking them off. It's a pretty easy concept, though. So we'll go ahead, like I said, right there. Second drops down, I'm hitting that pass. Second that linebacker jumps in like he's going to play the run, I'm hitting that pass. And last but not least. So next up out of the single back wide trips, we have the PA zone shot. This is a cover four beater. This play takes really no uh, adjustments at all. 
Uh, you just want to buy time. Uh, I did that by running. <laughs> and you can see how I just throw it up over the, the coverage for a touchdown right there. So basically, um, if you want to, you can put Samuel on a drag so you give yourself a high-low series of checkdowns. Um, you know, like I said, you know, just in case you don't have the time or you want to attack a different area of the field. But this is a one-play touchdown. Uh, if you choose the wrong coverage, I should say that if you choose, if if you pick this to be a cover four and the guy comes down to cover three, then obviously you're going to want to hit one of these other routes. But realistically, you can hit the one-play touchdown with these adjustments, uh, just as is. Like it's sacked on this last play. But you want to be close to the line of scrimmage because this is like a 60-yard ball you're throwing here. So I'm just going to wait for this cornerback to, to cross that side there, and then I'm just going to outrun the coverage. So, like I said, really easy play. One of my favorite cover four beaters. You have a lot of options with the drag and with the RB route just in case you pick it against the wrong coverage. But it's all about timing. It's all about timing when you throw it over this safety. I said, I'll go ahead and I'll show, I'll show the, uh, the route. You're essentially just waiting for him to cross this. Once he gets inside this safety, you're just throwing it. This is when you throw it, you know, over in the direction that he's going, pass lead it, and to just run to the ball. And, you know, no, nobody's going to catch it at that point. Next up, we have the Salem. This play here, all I'm going to do is put the RB route on a, on a streak. I'm sorry, on a slant. Um, I can motion over McCaffrey if I want. You can see it'll it'll create a little bit more space for the slant because that's really the route that I'm going for. As you can see, he just comes open underneath the pulling streak. Uh, which, you know, that's that's really one of the, the big plays. But if you don't, I mean, like right there, I mean, the streak, you're really going streak or slant. Those are your two biggest options. And then McCaffrey is the check down. You also have... The, the B route there is a pretty good one as well. Um, you know, a lot of times this is a quick hitting route. I tried to squeeze it in. Obviously, it didn't work. Um, but, yeah, this is definitely, um, you know, these are your, these are your best options and then right here. I actually think this route over here, too, would be better as a comeback route because now I have a really good man beater, a really safe man beater play. And it doesn't really get into the, to the you know, the rhythm or the timing of any of these other throws. So I always have that as like a safety blanket. So we got one more time. And like I said, comeback route. You know, the spacing's still perfect, so didn't mess with that at all. Right, we're going to do that. I can, make, I can make the motion the same way. Like I said, I can tell the motion's probably going to be there. You know what I'm saying I gotta take that instant instant shot you know what I'm saying so that's to me a really good play next up we got the zone weak alert bubble you're really just watching the uh, defender and how they react to the RB like if they come in like that obviously I threw it too quickly and I brought myself back to the line that won't happen normally but typically I'm just watching their reaction like I said right there he comes inside you can see how the other receiver um, gets cleared out and then you just have a good play to the to the sideline you typically want your uh, your best receiver like right there. I mean, uh, you can get that. You can they can jump that route. You got to be careful. Luckily, I, I had a good a good pass over the top. Um, but you know, I'm typically like I want to bullet pass it out and get it out there as quick as possible so I can get my guy to catch and run. But these plays are really kind of glitchy. Ultimately, the run play is pretty good. I would say that scenario. You know, the way that the quarterback holds the ball, it's really not the reason you would call this play. You're calling this play because you want to get it out to this RB route. Now, like I said, I mean, if you just if you pass lead out and bullet it out and you have a good athlete, you'll typically get a positive play of about five or ten yards. Next up, we got the halfback off tackle. This play feels like a stretch, um, and a lot of times it can really you can really take this inside or outside. Um, it kind of curves you towards the inside, but you can really take it however you want. This is one of the first plays I've ever put out in this channel. So let's go ahead and let's do that again. Like I said, I'm, I'm just, just taking a wide angle. It's that simple. Just a really consistent run play. Next up, we got the PA deep. So I find this is a really easy one play touchdown against cover three. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put him on an out route, then smart route, and motion him over. Then I'm going to put my tight end on a drag, block my running backs, and this is basically the play. I find that rolling out is really going to be important, uh, but you can see, like, whatever whatever that did, it really holds the cover three cornerback down. I could have just about did anything right there. 
So let's do it again. Like I said, I think it's important to put him on an out route than smart route him before motioning him out. I think this is actually kind of glitchy. Um, and then, like I said, dragging Olsen. So like I said, you can see right here, I mean, this, that cover three cornerback stays down tight. And then I got my lane, but obviously I got hit, so it's a really bad throw. So make that adjustment, then motion him out, drag the tight end. I'm not sure if dragging the tight end is really necessary or not, but... Like I said, it, it works. It keeps them down. And then, like I said, you're just pass leading, bombing it through the cover three safety, and you're pretty much gone from anywhere. So, really easy cover three touchdown. Uh, there really aren't a lot out there right now. I'm going to try it without putting the tight end on the drag and see what happens. Like I said, that cover three corner, yeah, he's still holding it tight. So, I can do whatever I want with that tight end. It really has nothing to do with it. But, realistically, the drag is probably still the best thing to do with the tight end, so that's part of it. And like I said, I think it really has to do with, with, with putting him on that out route, then smart routing him before I motion him out. If I do it, the, if I don't, if I don't do that before I motion him out, I don't think he stays home like that. So like I said, there we go. That's a bad throw. But let's go ahead and let's check it out. What happens if I motion him out first? So like I said, motion, motion more out first, and watch what happens. Watch how he doesn't stay home. He just races back. Actually, he still does, but not really. See, see how he backs up. I mean, I still got it, but you see, no, I don't. See, like, that's why I said, you have to put him on that before you motion him out. It's really key to this. If you, if you don't do that before you motion him out, he doesn't stay home. And then I'll streak. I can streak Olsen, too, because that's like, you know, that'll give something for the user to chase also. Like I said, he stays home. I don't know what it is, but he stays home. He really sticks to that receiver way more. So, really easy cover three touchdown right there. Next up, we got the PA scissors. So, another good cover three touchdown formation. Uh, just block the running back. Put your, your X route on an out route, then smart route, and then motion them out. And you're going to still have that same type of type of sticky coverage underneath. As you can see, we're just going to bomb that up. Uh, pretty much every time he's going to get past that cover three easily. Then you got your man beaters, which are going to be, you know, you can leave it as is. You got your tight end. It's going to be great man coverages. Um, he's going to, you know, exploit that big time. Um, you know, just, just as is. No real adjustments needed there. Same thing against cover two. He's going to be really good against cover two and uh, the, the, the RB route. You know, they're, they're going to play the high and low cover two game really well. Wherever the cornerback goes, you throw to the other receiver. What is it? What is it? If the, if the cover two cornerback drops back to A, you, you throw it to the RB route. The cover, if the cover two cornerback drops back to uh, to the RB route, you throw it to A. It's going to be that simple when it comes to cover two. So here we got some cover two routes. Like I say, it's going to change pretty much every time. But the dramatic, how dramatic the angle is, you know, it really depends on if it's a soft squat or a cloud. Obviously, if it's a soft squat or a flat, you know, then you're going to throw to that tight end. But if it's a cloud, they, they appear to be dropping back. So you got to take that check down. You got to take that catch and run pretty much every time. Next up, we got the 866 hook. So if you smart route the X route, you got a one-play TD against against cover four. You just have to wait till he gets across the field. And he gets across the field a little bit quicker uh, than he typically would. You can see as he gets past that one safety, there's just nothing there. So that's a really good uh, cover play or cover four one-play touchdown right there. So like I said, all you got to do is smart route him. You don't have to make any other adjustments. I mean, obviously, I'd like that running back to be blocking. And then just wait till he gets past that safety, and they're just flat-footed and getting burnt across the field. So, really good play. We'll have the same effect against cover three if you put him on a smart route and then put the B on a, on a comeback route. Um, you know, that'll typically have the exact same effect. Uh, it's just going to be a tighter window, but you can see it gets passed. Um, so, whether it's cover three or cover four, you have that option. If I really wanted to open that up, I could put Olsen on a streak and then move him across the field. Um, but ultimately, you know, that's just to me that's gonna just pull the safety back a little bit Which will make the, the throwing lane a little bit better as you can see it's much bigger right there I mean the way that it, uh, that safety gets pulled down because of that route so that'll make it even easier But obviously if you if you make a lot of motions um, but Obviously if you make a lot of motions, it's going to you know I don't, I don't want to say this will give away the plate necessarily because obviously this type of look um, can have that effect from a, from a run play, you know what I mean? Like you don't really have to um, have to worry about too much. And then I'm on, I'm on the run right there. But that that whole play was messed up. I didn't even put the guy on a smart route. And it still worked. 
So like I said, smart route more, motion Olsen across. And then put Samuel on a comeback, and this is going to be a monstrous broken cover three. You can see how that safety just drops down, uh, making him get burnt even worse. And then if I pass lead up the field a little bit better, I'll have a bigger window. So we're going to do that one more time. So I wish I could get him to the line. We we'll probably do that with the running back the same. Except, but he's just he just gets he just bites way too deep. That safety just bites way too deep, so it's it's game over. You can do it with the running back as well. He's already on a route. You know what I'm saying? Then in this scenario, I'd probably block Olsen. I don't think I necessarily need that, but I can make Olsen on a drag, like a check down on a drag or any number of things. But you can see he doesn't pull coverage the same way that Olsen does. Next up out of the strong Y off, we got the PA Boot X Shot. This is a really good man beater play, whether it's cover one or cover two. So we'll pick cover one. Ready, ready, ready. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put my X route on a smart route, and he's going to be gone pretty much every time. If it's a cover two, he can even be gone too, but you have to like throw it to the sideline a little bit better. But this is basically your cover one buster. If it's covered too, like I said, you can do the same. Put him in a, a smart route. You're just going to have to throw it over to the sideline a little better. And I got hit while doing it, but you can see there's a lane. Next up, we got the PA slide. No adjustments needed. You're just kind of reading front to back. So, like, if the RB route's there, you can take it for a good catch and run. You probably want to put a running back there. I mean, he's not very athletic. He probably could have got a little bit more. But you're going to read that. Uh, the A route's probably going to be the best route. The B route's not really an option. If you're going, the third option is going to be the comeback route. So you're reading front to back with the comeback route being the last option. Uh, but ultimately, the way that this, you know, that comes across the field, it's going to be a really good play. There, I waited too long to throw. you got to get that out quick or you're going to run out of bounds like I did there. But he was wide open. And I typically want to run it from the far hash mark as much as possible. Uh, but like I said, if you have a good athlete running this, you don't have to worry. Like, even there, he was somebody who was in the area. You could typically turn up with it. But I, I just didn't substitute anybody, so I'm kind of at the mercy of what I have. But like I said, I mean, that or the A route is going to be open. If they're not open, then the, the comeback route is going to be open. One of the three will be open every time. You Your best man beater is definitely going to be the comeback route as well. You can jump right to that read if you have a man coverage. But you can see, I mean, one of those three always gets it. Next up, we got the stretch alert looky. It's just a good run play, and then obviously you have... Um, you know, the option to throw back to the slant, uh, you know, if the, if the linebacker chases out of the center of the field. Which typically they're going to do. You know what I mean? Like, you're just kind of reading, do he, does he have an inside release? And if he does, he's going to be a good option. But ultimately, it's a good stretch play. Um, you just don't, you know, don't touch anything and, and the handoff will happen. If you, if you want to throw, you just have to hold the X route, you know, the hold the X button uh, before the play. So it's pretty easy. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bits and more. Link in the description below.